and today I have a little haul for you. Yes, I know, I've been trying to control the hauls, but I was watching YouTube this past week and I found a couple of things that people were showing on YouTube that looked really interesting to me, so of course I had to try them too. So I ran out, picked those things up, and a couple of other things that kind of struck my fancy. Well, let's start with this haul. I went in on Thursday of last week to get my Botox touched up, but this time I decided I would like to try something a little different. I'd always wanted to see what the difference was between Botox and Dysport. And I so I got the Dysport this time. And I gotta tell you, right now I am really loving the Dysport more than the Botox. I kind of feel like it worked faster on me because you know, usually Botox will take about gosh, I would say a good seven to eight days before I really see it take effect. Dysport, and people have said this too, sometimes takes um, maybe two or three days to see the effects on it. Well, I had, um, I had it injected like right around this area and this area and this area. <laughs> okay, I had it injected in a lot of areas. But I really, really saw a difference right here in the um, brow line. I really felt like it started to lift almost, I'm not gonna say immediately, but probably within a day. There was a big difference. Now, my husband keeps telling me I'm gonna have a rock eyebrow if it keeps going up anymore. You know how the rock's always got that one eyebrow. I can't move it up because it's already, you know, taken effect. <laughs> So, so hopefully it'll stay kind of right around here. And if it does, I will be very, very happy. I also had my bunnies done. I've never had my bunnies done. And if you don't know what the bunnies are, they're this area right here where, you know, like a bunny will do that. As you can see, I'm still doing that. So I don't think it's, um, I don't think that's taken effect yet. But we shall see. Let's see what happens there. But I just thought it would be kind of interesting to see what would happen if I had this injected. I was on Hot Look a few weeks ago and Hot Look does tend to take um, a few weeks before they do ship. They're not instant like Amazon Prime, my favorite, of course. But they were having a really good deal on one of these. It's a light stem. Have you ever tried one of these? I have never tried this. I've seen people on YouTube talking about them, but supposedly you can just hold this up to your face and the light stimulates collagen. So let's see, let's look at this picture. This is a before picture. This is an after picture. Anyway, I've seen people talk about this on YouTube. I like the concept of it and the way they were describing the way it worked really reminded me a little bit of the Ulthera. So basically it comes with this little machine here and these are the little lights. I think they light up. You plug it in, it's got a plug like so. It also comes with, um, gosh, what else? Oh, it comes with some little goggles. I'm not gonna pull it all out because I think I might do a video on this. Um, and then some peptide serum. But anyway, I guess what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to turn this on and hold this up to the areas that you feel like need extra um, collagen boosting to help um, uh, get rid of wrinkles. So you put this on and I wanna say you hold it on your face for about three minutes and this light will like shoot through your skin and then kind of towards the end, now this is what caught my attention, made me think it might be similar to the Ulthera, is that kind of towards the end of the three minute session you kind of feel the heat underneath your skin because when you do Ulthera, if you've seen my videos and heard me describe it, you feel like a heat right underneath your skin, kind of towards the end of the pulse. So that's what led me to believe that something like this may work and help rejuvenate collagen. So I am gonna um, try this out. I'll let you know how I like it, but I did purchase this light stem. It was like about $140, which I thought was a good deal because I think they are closer to 200 if you were to buy them when they're not on sale. So um, yeah, if you're interested in one of those, look for those on hotlook.com. And more anti-aging, I purchased um, the CeraVe Facial Moisturizing Lotion. Now, you all know that I love the AM, this is the PM version. But so many of you told me that I would really like this one. So I was at CVS the other day, they were having a sale on their CeraVe. It was buy one, get one 50% off. So I thought this would be the perfect time to try this one. And I will tell you, I do really like this one. It's a little bit of a thinner moisturizing lotion. It is more of a lotion than it is um, a cream. So that was kind of surprising to me. I even wanna say this is a little, um, thinner, like a little more lightweight and sheer than the 
day cream or the day moisturizer. Now that may be because it has sunscreen in it. I don't know. But this is a really, really nice um, product and it's highly recommended by dermatologists. It's like $13 or $14 for a little bottle like this. And it is full of great ingredients for your skin. It has ceramides, niacinamide, and hyaluronic acid. I don't know if I said that second word correctly, but um, those are all ingredients that you find in the super, super high and expensive skincare creams. And um, why would you need to spend that if you can get it all right here for $13, $14? And since it was buy one, get one for 50% off, I couldn't stop at just the PM. I had to pick up an eye cream as well, which contains all of the same type of ingredients um, that all of the other great moisturizers have, only this one is formulated for the eye area. I don't normally use an eye cream, but I figured that um, I would try this one because I haven't really found an eye cream that I absolutely love is the reason why. But since I do love this product line, I thought um, this might be a nice one to try. But, there's more. <laughs> because of the sale, I decided I had also been wanting to try this hydrating cleanser for normal to dry skin. I've been using, um, what have I been? Oh, I've been using the Garnier Oil Cleanser, which I do really like, but I seem to be really obsessed with this particular line, so I figured I would try the cleanser. I like the fact that it doesn't um, foam. I know some people do like a lather and a foam in their cleansers. I feel like lather and foam strips away too much of your natural moisturizer in your skin, so at my age, I kind of feel like I prefer to have a non-foaming cleanser, but I do believe that's a personal preference. And I also found another cleanser. Now this one does foam. This is the Renewing SA Cleanser. I do believe that the SA stands for salicylic acid, which I like to use this in my shower with my Clarisonic. It's the Aqua Glycolic. And I like the Aqua Glycolic because it has the alpha hydroxy acids in it, which help to exfoliate your skin. And I do believe salicylic acid also helps to exfoliate your skin. So I thought this might be a good replacement for this one. So I'm gonna try all of these out and let you know how I like them. So stay tuned for those videos in the future. Now, I don't remember exactly what she was demonstrating, but Christine Richards, sorry if you're watching, um, I don't remember <laughs> what it was that you were using this with, but um, that's not the point. The point is you were using this um, e.l.f. Kabuki brush. When I saw that, I had to have it. I loved it because it was so thick. Look at how thick that is. And I love the shape of it. I love that it's like um, an oblong shape instead of just like a big round kabuki brush. So I went to the e.l.f. website and ordered one. These are like $10 and so far I'm absolutely loving it. I think this is going to be good for like a um, loose powder to apply your loose powders. Um, it'd probably be really good for a bronzer. And even um, I like to put bronzer sometimes on my legs and on my decollete, you know, in the summer just to kind of give a little more color um, to certain areas to kind of highlight and accent a nice tan or a self tan. When I was on the e.l.f. website, of course, you know, if you know anything about e.l.f., if you order a certain amount of products to get free shipping, you need to order, you know, other things. And of course, I. I could just pay the couple dollars for shipping, but why? Why when you can buy other products? <laughs> so I bought this makeup remover pen, which I love to replace the one that I have that's dried up. And I got a couple more brushes that looked really interesting too. This is nothing um, too new and super exciting. This is just the powder brush. But, and this one looked really, really interesting. I haven't tried this one yet, but this is the contouring brush. And it is shaped like this as well which I thought would be really nice for contouring. I also picked up a couple of e.l.f. blushes. They're the Contouring Blush and Bronzing Powder. This one is in St. Lucia, and it's kind of a pretty coral color, which I think is really, really pretty. It's gonna look nice in the summer. And this one is called Fiji. As you can see, it's a little more of a, a pinkish color with um, just, you know, a pretty bronze color. I'm trying to figure out if it's got shimmer. It doesn't look like this one has shimmer. So I do like a bronzer without shimmer. Sometimes I think it gives you a more tan, like a natural tan look without going too overboard. But don't get me wrong, I like a little bit of a good shimmer as well. So just for the names alone, I absolutely loved these St. Lucia and Fiji. 
but I also really, really love e.l.f. bronzers. And then These Brianna Stanko did a review on the new CoverGirl Stay Luminous um, foundation. And of course I had to try it because her review was so raving that um, it looked um, so enticing that I ran to CVS <laughs> and bought two of them. I bought two because I wasn't 100% sure what color I would need. And when you purchase drugstore makeup, sometimes it's hard to, to really know um, what you're gonna need to use. Because so, summer is coming up, we all tend to be a little bronzer. I picked up the Classic Tan, which this is pretty much, um, the color of my skin in the summer, whether I like it or not. My skin just naturally tans. Um, whether I put 80 sunscreen on or nothing, I don't I don't know. I think it might just be the heat. <laughs> I might just be one of those people that heat hits my skin and boom, I'm tan. But I seriously, I do. I put sunscreen on like crazy, but um, I thought this would be a nice match for that. And um, also I picked up the Soft Honey because I actually think this might be a good color for my skin tone when I am not tan. And also, um, it would be kind of a good way to transition as well. I can always add a couple drops of this. In fact, that's what I did today. I mixed the two. I just did half and half, and this is the color that I got. And as you can see, um, it does look really, really luminous. And so far, I'm absolutely loving this foundation. I don't normally like CoverGirl cosmetics in general. I don't know why. I just have never really loved the formulas. But I do really like these. And then I was walking past the Milani display at CVS and I found this lip gloss, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. I want to say this is called Brilliant Shine. Okay, that's the brand. Luminous. Luminous. So we're still luminous here. So we've got the luminous uh, foundation. Now we have the luminous um, lip gloss. So it looks like this. I'll do a little swatch here. Here's a little swatch right there. So you can see it's a pretty color. I think it's really pretty. Reminds me a little bit of the MAC Purr, but I'm not 100% sure because I've never seen that one in person. I've only seen it on people. And I keep meaning to go buy one, but then I keep talking myself out of it. There's a um, MAC counter at one of the airports that I fly in and out of a lot. And I keep meaning to go in there and um, just have them make me over but then I talk myself out of it because I know what'll happen I'll walk in there and three hundred dollars later I'll come out with all new makeup and I just don't really feel like I need to spend that on makeup right now I have everything I need sometimes I think it's just better to just pick up a dupe <laughs> a so-called dupe I don't even know if this is really a dupe but here it is on my lips I put this on over Mm, another lipstick. I want to say it's a wet and wild. It's kind of a peachy coral color. I'll look that up and put the name below. But I just think this is a really pretty lip gloss. Oh. And then I went back to Sally Beauty Supply to return the tanning mousse that I thought was the right color, but I wasn't paying any attention and grabbed the wrong color. So I picked up my Tan Wise, the correct Tan Wise in bronze. It's the mousse. This is While I was in Sally Beauty Supply, I found a couple of other things to pick up. Let's see, I think Sophie was with me, so she got a couple of little things. She loves to get lip glosses and nail polishes and whatever. And I decided that maybe I would try these nail polish remover pads from Beauty Secrets. And I'm just gonna tell you, they're okay. I have used one. Um, I thought they'd be similar to the ones that you can get at Ulta. The Ulta pads, you can pretty much get all of the polish off of Ulta nails with one pad. These not so much. So that's why I'm here to try things out for you to tell you if they're good or bad. And I'm not saying that those are bad. I'm just going to tell you they're not as good as the ones that you can get at Ulta. So then Sophie had a dance class and I dropped her off there and had a little bit of time to, um, to spare. Dominic was at home with dad. Usually he's not. Usually daddy is at work, Jim's at work, and um, Dominic is with me and I can't really do much with him because he's a boy and he'll just complain. So I actually had a little bit of time to, to go wander around Ross for a little while. So I picked up um, a pair of flip-flops. These are Flojo's. And I know Lisa Lisa D1 was talking about a pair of Flojo's that she bought. Actually, I think she bought several pairs at Costco. These are different. These are kind of suede. They're really soft, suede or nubuck, and I really love them. They were $8.99. I pretty much live in my flip-flops. I know a lot of you do. 
I do. I was into the Javianas, but then I discovered Reef and really, really liked the Reef flip-flops. And then um, I found these at Ross for $8.99 and thought, I would love to try these and these are actually the perfect flip-flops to keep in my flight attendant travel suitcase um, because they're so small and I can just throw them on with anything. I, I can throw them on with uh, a dress, I can throw them on with jeans and I am good to go. I mean they're not super dressy but I don't really dress up anyway. I'm pretty casual so I thought these would be the perfect travel shoes. Now these are size 9. I am an 8.5 normally but when I tried them on they fit really well and if I were to size up or size down I always size up. Um, I'd rather them be just a little too big than um, too small if you know what I mean. I don't like my toes coming over the edges or even meeting the edges. I like there to be just maybe a tiny bit of space. I don't like a lot of space but a tiny space and these um, fit the bill there. So definitely if you're looking to buy these and you can't decide if you're a half size I would definitely go up and I think you'll be happy with that. Now the funny thing about these um, when I think of Flojo I always think of Florence Griffith Joyner. I know these were not named after her. For the longest time, I thought they were. But do you remember Flojo, the um, the runner that was, um, I don't know, was it the 80s or the 90s, where she was um, like the fastest woman in the world? Anyway, um, I always think about her. Unfortunately, she passed away. Um, several years ago now. But I was lucky enough to get to meet her one time. I did a trade show for Coca-Cola several years ago and she was at the same trade show with her husband and they were promoting her nail polish line. Remember she used to have those really long nails and um, very elaborate. I think she may have been kind of the one of the first people to really really be into the nail art. And so I went over to her booth. I met her. I met her manicurist. I got a manicure. That was pretty exciting. I got kind of a you know a a nail art type manicure which I don't know that Coca-Cola was really thrilled about because they're very conservative <laughs> you know but that was kind of a neat opportunity so I will say that Florence Griffith Joyner also known as Flojo has a little place in my heart just for being such a sweet wonderful warm person um, it, that was a big loss when she when she passed away unexpectedly but once again these are not named after her <laughs> I actually think they're pronounced Floho, but um, they're from Mexico, and I, I think the surfers used to wear these, and so that's a little bit of the backstory. I do believe on this particular brand of flip-flops, so I'm really, really excited to wear these. I'm just babbling on and on and on, so I will, um, I will stop right there. And there's my haul, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you're looking to do a little shopping, maybe you're inspired to to try some of the products that I showed you today. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and would like to, please subscribe, leave me a comment. I always love hearing from you and I will talk to you or see you very soon. Thanks for watching.